Hi, Chris. How's everybody? Good. Thank you, Chris, for evening worship and Brother Wes. You're yeah. very welcome. Wonderful. It is. I'm glad folks are enjoying it. Oh, very much. Morning and evening. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I missed some of that. I'm sorry. Morning, Jane and Father Bill. Good morning. Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for signing in. We're going to start here in just a minute. We are hoping and praying we don't have the same glitches we had last Sunday. But if for some reason this whole thing blows up on us again, I'm going to switch to Facebook Live and do what I did last week. So, and if that, if this Zoom thing keeps glitching, then we will figure out another way to do this. There are several platforms available to us. We didn't go ahead and switch because everybody's figured this out. We all know how to do this now and we don't want to confuse anybody. So we're trying to stick with Zoom as long as Zoom will stick with us. So we're going to just uh, move forward with this. And um, I just want to say, um, you're going to want to stay on till the end of the service today if you were thinking you were going to jump off early. We have a special treat for you. Caleb and the choir have been working on a, on a special offering. So you're going to want to stay on. Um, so hold on, it's pretty fantastic. All right, so with that, let's begin. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. 
The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. be with you and also with you let us pray O god the king of glory you have exalted your only son jesus christ with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven do not leave us comfortless but send us your holy spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where your our savior christ has gone before who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. David, you will have to unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear it now? Frank, can you hear me? Yes. yes, we can hear you. Okay, here we go. The first reading is from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 through 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. And Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 16. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let, but let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom, but the rebels shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain. At the, the presence, presence of God, God, the God of Sinai. At the, the presence of God, 
the God of Israel. You sent a gracious man, O God, a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places. The God of Israel gives strength and power to all his people. Blessed be God. The second reading is from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Oh. 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in the, your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name, that you have given me, so that they may be one, as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. Amen. Blessings and peace, my sisters and brothers in Christ. Today is the Sunday after the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's hard to believe that it's been 43 days since Easter, but none of this, but nonetheless, here we are. We enter that time of the church calendar where the first lesson takes place before our gospel reading. The gospel story occurs just after the Last Supper and before Jesus is betrayed in the garden. Today's first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles and speaks to the ascension of Jesus. This is where, after returning from the dead on the Easter day, Jesus ascends back into heaven to be with the Father and the Holy Spirit. The ascension of Jesus Christ was 40 days after Easter, which was last Thursday. From the Acts reading, imagine for a moment how the disciples felt as they watched Jesus being lifted up and a cloud took them out of sight. Remember, just 40 days earlier, Jesus was raised from the dead and returned to them. Remember, from the time that Jesus was arrested in the garden until he was resurrected on Easter, the disciples were afraid. They thought they were going to be crucified next, so they ran and fled. Now, after his resurrection, Jesus in his physical state is leaving them again. They watch him fade away in the distance. What was, going, what was going through their minds? The two men in white robes said, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? He will come the way that you saw him go into heaven. I don't really think that helped too much. I bet the disciples just kept looking up because um, for Jesus to return since the men in the white robes gave them hope that Jesus was coming back. The disciples had no idea that Jesus would not return in their lifetime. What was it like for the disciples to be left alone? Not once, but twice. Did Jesus leave them for good? They had just gotten Jesus back. Now he left them again. He did leave them a promise that the Holy Spirit would be coming later, but here they are faced with the reality that Jesus left them again and they are alone again. But is that true? Did Jesus leave them in the period between the ascension and the day of the Holy Spirit descends upon them? I personally believe that Jesus never left them. 
You may not know this, but I'm a licensed private pilot, even though I haven't flown in many years. A long, long time ago, when I was 16 years old, I soloed my first airplane, flying the plane by myself, right about the same time I received my official driver's license. Can you imagine that? I remember my first solo flight like it was yesterday. I arrived at the airport for my normal lesson. I, got a, I go out and I do the flight check of the airplane as usual. My instructor and I get into the plane and he proceeds to tell me to do three takeoffs and landings. After I land for the third time, he tells me to taxi to the ramp. I taxi there and to my surprise, he opens up the door of the plane jumps down to the ground. He looks up at me, smiles, and then shouts over this loud propeller and engine that's running. I want you to do three more takeoffs and landings. And then he walks off. I sat there for a moment, just stunned. I was frozen. I felt alone. I felt like the disciples must have felt when Jesus ascended. I was so scared to be alone. What was I gonna do? I, could, I couldn't just sit there paralyzed. And after a little time, my body kicks in and I was pumped full of adrenaline because I was literally scared to death. So I taxied to the end of the runway and you know what I was doing? I was talking to myself. Yes, you heard right, I was talking to myself. Actually, I felt as though my instructor was right there sitting in the co-pilot seat, talking to me, quote, in, in, end quote. I was repeating the commands he gave me each and every time when I was preparing for takeoff, when I flew in the flight pattern and doing my landings. It was no different than if he was sitting right there all along, and in a way, he was. While my story is about me sewing an airplane, I'm sure each of you have a similar story. Maybe it was the first time your parents took the wheels off your bicycle, the time when you're Parents dropped you off at summer camp. The time you drove a car for the first time by yourself. The time you were dropped off at college for the first time your parents leave. Or maybe even the time you lost a loved one or someone special to you. Even though they may not physically be there, someone was there to comfort you, whispering in your ears, telling you what to do, how to pedal, how to drive, how to make good decisions. How to live life. This is the way I like to envision how the disciples felt in this in-between time. Jesus was there whispering in their air, ear what to do. After two to three years that Jesus was with the disciples, let's face it, in the gospel, the disciples are portrayed as that they do not get it during that time they are with them. Always questioning Jesus, always being corrected by Jesus, sometimes not in the most of flattering of ways. But here they are after the ascension. What did the disciples do? They went back to Jerusalem. They went to the upstairs where they were staying and they were constantly devoting themselves to prayer. How many times had Jesus told them to pray and they instead fell asleep? So to hear that they were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, they finally got it. They did not run, they did not hide. They trusted that Jesus was still with them. They trusted that Jesus was gonna send the Holy Spirit to them. I could just hear Jesus whispering in their ears for the 10 days until Pentecost came. Though what was really amazing is that even though he was, a, that, that even though he was arrested, that the disciples got it. He knew, how did, how did we know? Well, because Jesus tells us so. He tells us even though he knows that he was being abandoned by his disciples, even though he knows he was being betrayed by one of them, he, he, even though he knows they will scatter and be afraid. We know by this beautiful prayer that Jesus says in today's Gospel of John that occurs after the Last Supper, but before he was arrested. He prays for himself and then he prays for his disciples. He prays, they were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that every, everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you 
and they have believed that you sent me. Wow, did I read that right? So when the disciples go back to Jerusalem, go to the upper room, constantly devoting themselves to prayer, it makes me get goosebumps and shiver with joy that the disciples finally get it. The disciples can go around being fools, questioning the Son of God, the Messiah. There is hope for me. There is hope for us. And may we learn the lessons that the disciples learn, that even though Jesus no longer is physically with us, he is forever with us, the, that God is forever with us. This trust in Jesus that the disciples displayed during this time is what last week Mother Ann talked about in her sermon, about how during the forced slowdown of our lives during this COVID-19, how has it made us to take another look at what's really important to us? to be with family, with friends, instead of working 100 hours a week, prioritizing things in a new light of what is important to us, the hope that each and every one of us understand and experience that God loves us no matter who you are or where you are in your life. God is constantly seeking us out to establish that relationship with us. So in times of transition, similar to where we are today in this COVID-19 experience, and transitioning back to the new normal, let us remind ourselves that we are not alone. Jesus is with us, just like he was with me in that airplane during my solo, along with my invisible instructor, just like he was with the disciples between Jesus' ascension and the Holy Spirit coming on Pentecost next Sunday. Let us remember that when choices come, that we prioritize the things that God wants us to prioritize in, in our lives, not just what we want. What should we do to deal with returning slowly back to the new normal? We should do what the disciples did, devote ourselves to prayer. Pray that we make healthy and wise decisions, not just for us and our actions, but those of our neighbors too. Let us be united in that mission, God's mission, the mission that Jesus came to teach us. As God and Jesus are one, Jesus prayed for us to be one. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. Pax a bonum, peace and all good. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, so he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithfully we pray for all bishops priests and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments 
We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially our family and friends on Trinity's prayer lists, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We offer prayers for our families, Will and Vicki Tarantino, Lisa, Dan, and Ryan Thompson, Charlie Toth, and Jim, Michelle, JT, and Zachary Euler. We offer prayers for our frontline workers during this COVID-19 crisis. Michelle, Beverly Ann, Vic, Brandy, Joey, Jimmy, Kendall, Mark, Robin, Brian, Amelia, Josh, Adam, Sarah, Sarah, Tori, Anna, Catherine, Caitlin, Ben, Melanie, Jennifer, Caitlin, Kai, Joseph, Amy, Carl, Victoria, Victor, Becca, Mike, Allison, and Aiden. We offer prayer for our military and their families. Lucas, Anna Marie, Chandler, Vincent, Brian, Beth, Grant, Patrick, Jonathan, Walter, Justin, Cameron, Adrian, Brad, Cody, Josh, Ben, David, Mike, Kevin, and Jerry. We offer prayers for our college students. Virginia, Gabrielle, AJ, Megan, Anna, Joshua, Martha, JT, Lydia, Ashley, and Joe. And let's say together the prayer for Trinity. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us into your service. Our mission is to invite others to be a part of our community, inspiring them to have a deep and abiding relationship with you and to serve all in your name. Help us to respond to that call wholeheartedly and lead us boldly into the future through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not left you with our whole heart. We have not left our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen and since today we are still unable to consecrate sacrament during this time let us say together the following prayer which acknowledges our dependence on the presence of Jesus in our lives. My Jesus, I believe you are truly pleasant in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Are there any birthdays in the coming week? If there are, just raise your hand like this. How about wedding anniversaries? I see a pointing, Keena. Are you pointing? Ours was last week. Yours was last week. So your wedding anniversary was last week. So we need to pray for you. Um, and I think, aren't the Tarantinos on your same day? I think so. Uh, it's like the weekend before. Okay. And Jane raised her hand when you did birthdays. Jane raised her hand. Okay, I didn't see that. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna pray for Jane and her birthday. And then we'll pray for Caleb and Ashley and Will and Vicki for anniversaries, okay? All right, let us pray for, for Jane as she celebrates her birthday. Holy God, we just thank you for Jane and for her many gifts and talents, the love she shares with her family and friends and all of us at Trinity. We pray your blessing upon her as she celebrates her birthday. We pray that this year would be one of health, happiness, and wholeness, and that she would be able to have time at some point in the near future to celebrate with her friends and family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Holy God, we just give you thanks for Caleb and Ashley and for Vicki and Will and for all that they mean to this community, to one another, to their family and friends. We just thank you for the love that you have created in these two couples and how your light just shines through all of them. Lord, we pray your blessing upon them as they celebrate their anniversary. We pray that you would continue to build um, a very strong bond between them and that they would always be reminded of the little things that brought them, brought them to each other in the first place. All this we ask in Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit may live and reign with you this day and always. And as we go into our final hymn, I want to give a special shout out to Caleb for putting this together, um, to Ashley, Bernice, Anita, and Amy for, um, for singing along. So as we sing together, we are all the choir, but we get to hear our choir together for the first time in many months. So thank you. What? 
go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. All right, everyone, please feel free to stay on and um, for coffee hour. You'll need to